Hello, I'm James, WA7JNJ, here on the summit of Kameno Island. Uh, not a really high summit, uh, but a broad activation zone, and uh, this is one of the, my favorite spots to activate it from. This video is in a series focused on newer activators or folks just looking into summits on the air. And today I'm gonna focus on the rules. To find the rules for summits on the air, go to the joining in link on the main Soda website and you'll find a link there for the general rules. Please note they were just updated on June 1st of 2022 and there are some slight wording changes, uh, but always good to go and check out the rules on the main site. Your association also uh, may have some rules there and related to seasonal bonus or other things. So it's always good to check your association's rules as well. So today I'll focus on the activator rules and I'm gonna cover the main ones, um, but definitely please look at the main guidelines as you're learning more. The first one is to make sure that you're in the activation zone. To do a summit on the air activation, you must be within 25 meters or 82 feet of the summit and when you look from the summit and draw a circle around going down your elevation needs to be within those 82 feet or 25 meters. On some summits this rule is pretty straightforward and easy and you know when you're in the activation zone or near the summit. Where this rule gets a little bit more complicated is the Soda Summit might not be the main hiking trail that you're hiking to that others view as the summit. One example is Bandera Mountain. It's a very popular hike. A lot of people go to that summit. The true summit though is a little bit further northeast and along a ridge line. And there's a drop of more than 82 feet or 25 meters between those peaks. And so because there's a drop of elevation outside of the activation zone, you do need to hike further along the ridge to get in the activation zone. Another example of this is Elk Mountain in the Olympics. The trail that most everyone goes to goes further than what the Soda Summit is. And so it's actually a little bit of a shorter hike to get to that summit and almost no one goes to, to that spot. The summit I'm on has a very broad activation area and a couple tools that I've used and some newer tools are really helpful in that. One is there's a Cal Topo map rule uh, that I found after quite a bit of research and set up and so I'll, I'll put a link in the description for that. And I'll go in there and I'll change the rule or edit it to the elevation. It's pretty quick, um, but that's one tool that I've used. Within Sotless, there's a drop down with a link to a new activation estimator. And that's a great tool that's very quick and easy. Uh, you can look at the summit, click on the drop down, do an estimate of where the activation zone is, and that'll help you research as you're uh, looking for potential activation areas. One thing that comes up often on some of the summits I'm researching is making sure you have legal access to be on the summit. Some summits are within private property or the access to the summit is limited or blocked off. Um, but it's always good to research the summit because what looks like it might be closed off or private, there might be a small section of the activation zone that has legal access and you can get to. When you're in the activation zone, you need one contact to make it count for an activation, but you need four unique call signs or contacts to count and get the points. Those contacts should include an exchange of call signs and signal reports. It's also strongly recommended to share the summit the year on every couple contacts. So I'll sometimes make contact with the same station, but on different bands just to get a contact on 220 or 440 or a different HF band. I'll still record those multiple conversations, but wanna make sure I at least get four with different call signs. When you're making those contacts, it's also important to make sure that they're simplex contacts only. Uh, you can't make contacts via repeater, although you can use a repeater to ask people to make simplex contacts. And if I'm struggling sometimes or on a different band, uh, for VHF or UHF, I'll sometimes go to a repeater, ask someone if they can try and make a simplex contact with me and that'll help. One of the next main rules is you cannot operate anywhere near a motorized vehicle. And so while the verbiage on this changed slightly uh, for this revision, the concept is still the same. Related to the vehicle rule is you're not allowed to use permanently installed electricity on the summit or a generator you need to use battery or solar to power your station. 
So while you're able to activate a summit multiple times for a year, you'll only get points for one of those activations. If you didn't get the seasonal bonus points the first time you activated for that year, and you activate the summit again and get points uh, during the seasonal time, you will get the bonus points added to your score. It's important to also only transmit on the bands and the frequencies that you're licensed for. I like to keep information saved on my phone so I can have a quick reference and look to see the frequencies and, and a check sometimes when I'm on a summit. So that's a quick overview of the rules for summits on the air. Definitely look at the Minnesota website to check current and or check any rules within your association. On some summits, we're the only person there. On other summits, there's quite a few folks, so always be respectful of those around us, knowing that we represent both summits on the air and amateur radio. A lot of times people ask me what I'm doing, if I'm fishing or all kinds of crazy stuff, but it's a great opportunity to start a conversation and share the hobby that we love. Hope you enjoyed this quick video as you start your journey with summits on the air. 73 W7 J&J. &J.